Welcome back to another episode of God's Business where I interview the top influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders so that you can create not just a good business, but God's business where he's the multiplier of your success. I have another episode with my wife, Amanda, here where we're gonna talk about how do you work together as a spouse. We've worked together since the very beginning of starting a business or getting married for that fact. We really didn't know that we should work apart because we just thought if we're gonna be successful, we probably should have two people working and that's created also now a decade of us working together. I know there's many people out there that don't work together with their spouse, other people that do work together with their spouse. It'll be relevant for both because again, going back, a power couple is two people with two different visions, creating one like-minded vision using their skills, talents, and abilities in order to get there. And it's not always that easy, but that's the goal. So welcome Amanda Barely. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah. excited for this episode. We actually got quite a few questions um, regarding this. How do you work together? How do you separate relationship and business? Um, and you know, how do you put God at the center? What are those things you guys do to have a good marriage? So um, you want to start off with talking about how we got started in business working together and kind of that Well, I think journey. it should be the, yeah, I, I think the buildup of like the foundation beforehand as well, because I think that that was, that was relevant in the entire process mm -hmm. is like, well, what do we put first and like how, what's the frame in which we're looking at business through? So, you know, for, for us before, and you kind of tell your part, like my story is I grew up in a family that wasn't Christians. And so I wasn't, I, I wasn't going to church. I had whatever maybe American values came from Christianity, like conservative values, mm -hmm. but also ones that were not conservative, like drinking tons of alcohol. My family's very normal, obviously smoking lots of cigarettes and all that kind of stuff. It's just a normal thing. Fighting was pretty normal. Yeah. Anger or whatever. And so for me, I didn't have like this, I didn't go to Sunday school. I didn't have people teach me these things, which was also kind of my benefit and as I started exploring, is there something bigger out there? I got into the demonic stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went from the demonic stuff to finding God, finding Christ, accepting Jesus, being filled with his Holy Spirit, clothed with his Holy Spirit. And that's what set me on fire to just go do ministry, mm -hmm. like, the, like the disciples. And throughout that, that's what You're led like us Paul. both. It's your middle name's Paul. My middle name is Paul. Mm -hmm. and, and even my name went from Nick to Nicholas, which is victory, Nick to victory of the people, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was meant to pour out to people and I was willing to do whatever. At this time, I thought I was not going to get married and I'd die by 30. Yep. And I'm 31, right? You made it. I'm 31? Yep. <laughs> That's so awkward. So I'm 31, apparently. Ugh. I know, dude. I, I was with a bunch of teenagers last night and I thought, I'm young. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like 16 years older than them. What the heck? Yeah, awkward. So I'm 31 apparently. And so at this point, I was 18 years old, went to ministry school, or applied for ministry school. That's originally where we really connected. We went to mm -hmm. an event beforehand. We'll have to do a whole show on how we met because it's like a two hour it ordeal is. of just crazy we'll stories. We'll have to do like a no 60 one. minute special. 60 minute special. Yes. We should. Yeah. 60 minute special <laughs> of how we met. And, and really at this point, we got accepted into ministry school because our goal was to love God serve God, be obedient, mm -hmm. bring heaven to earth, bring the power of God to earth and walk in everything that he had. And our desire was more so for him and his presence than it was for anything else. Yeah. That's the basis. And so I think that that's a really important piece mm -hmm. of the relationship is that that's how we started going into everything. We became friends at first and we were just sharing stories and testimonies and things like that. Obviously, I kind of had feelings towards you and maybe the opposite. I don't know. You can tell your side. <laughs> but but ultimately, it led to us dating before ministry school, going to ministry school, getting married in between first and second year, coming back to second year, starting a business. Yes. And then being more into like feeling really called to business. And when I had that lens of business, I looked at the Bible and everything that God had completely differently because I had this new thing to like, see God through it was like through the business realm. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at everyone going, bro, what this what God's saying here is like this is business. But none of them saw it the same way. Mm -hmm. And so we just hardcore like 
Like this is what we're called to do. Like we're meant to go into this business world when we thought we were completely going to the spiritual world. And so our goal was already to serve God, care about his presence over everything else. But also it was a struggle at first when we get married, go into business and then fail because failure is not a fun thing to go through. Mm -hmm. So when you're like, God, you called us to do this and now you made us fail. You made us look bad in front of everyone else. It looks like we don't even have you with us. That was probably like the testing difficult season of all of it, mm-hmm. which was really hard. So that was, that was yeah. my foundation. I don't know if you want to share some of yours. Um, I think you nailed it. I think um, we both were like go-getters and we didn't, you know, I think like even the his- the backstory why we started working together and why we were both excited about business is because it really has been a part of our DNA since we were young. Yeah. Um, I started uh, like a paper route when I was seven. My mom would take me in Ohio in the snow and I would throw, you know, the papers out of our minivan. It was like, it was really fun actually. Um, and so that was like every Thursday, that's what I did. And then I started babysitting at 10, which I'm still like floored that anyone would trust me with their children. I do not trust a 10 year old. Absolutely not. And so I started babysitting at 10 and then I just, you know, babysat all the time and, and did other little things. And what, so do you think that you liked like, paper on babysitting or did you like I liked making money? money I liked making money because what it could do for me. And I also just liked providing like value. Like I think It was just nice, like, me providing value for someone, and they were thankful, so then they gave me money in return. I like that, and I was always very... Because wouldn't your parents have bought you what you wanted, though? Like, why did you... Yes. I didn't need to work. I liked it. And also, shoveling snow in the winter. Like, I did that, and, like, doing, like, little hot dog stands and lemonade stands, and so... Yeah. I think I just... My parents got me a bank account really young, and so I just loved, like, the numbers of it. And I was like, oh, it's like growing, like it's getting bigger. And like, I look at like my checkbook and everything. And so, I don't know. I was just always like fascinated by that. Um, And then you obviously had a lawn care company. Yeah. But like for me, I just wanted to be a pro athlete and be great at everything I did. So I had a checkbook too. And like a checks and balances, like this is what I withdrew. This is my total left. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want to fill that out. Like, I'm the same way that I am now. I was like, I just want to stuff more money into it yep. and not worry about it. Yep. And I'm the same way. I look at the bank account like every day on everything. Yeah. And I I don't, which I, I again, isn't a strength. And, and so for me, it was like my dad would make me knock doors, even for like fundraisers for school. Oh, yeah. I love that. And I that. hated that. Oh, no. I love it, He wrote dude. me a script, like yeah. made me go door to door. I didn't know if I was supposed to read the script or not, but like he gave me the script for it. And I just like hated knocking on the door. I didn't really like all the money making activities, but it was like, you know, he also made me, hey, if you want to get this, then you have to earn it. And so we, yeah, we created a lawn care company, used my dad's equipment, went door to door, and we just go to the worst yards and be like, hey, like we're running a lawn care company. I see that you need help. Mm -hmm. We'd love to give you a quote. We, underquoted and we'd have them do repetitive services where at you know sixth seventh grade I had like three thousand bucks in my sock drawer Mm -hmm. something like that and so I I understood it but I also didn't care that much about it like I was like okay like I did it but now what Mm -hmm. like I didn't really want more money I didn't really want to grow it I didn't want to work a ton more because I just I need that vision Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing it's like being a pro athlete gave me vision for the future, like something to come. Whereas the working, it was like, yeah, I cut down, I cut the lawns and we mowed them and I made money and I don't know what I'm going to, like, what am I going to do with it? Yeah, I have money mm-hmm. in my sock drawer now. So, like, you don't get excited about, like, necessarily, like, building a, a big business. You're like, what can this money do for the kingdom? What can this money do for our family? Like, you don't really care about the money you just what will it eventually do yeah, well and the vision right towards? like even the even the ability to communicate i need to know why like why am i doing this why am i doing this why mm-hmm. why 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 <clears throat> and so i had a little bit of that but it was always based on like a, a passion getting better at something mm-hmm. 
And it wasn't until one good thing inside a business that was like, where are your passions and your and your responsibilities overlap? That was a really big one for me. Yes, that's good. Because I was like, I knew responsibilities weren't just like provide for my family. Responsibilities were also, what are the things that God's called me to do on the earth that I know I'm supposed to do? And if I know I'm supposed to do that, how are, how can I align my passions? What passions would overlap with that? So I was like, well, I like communicating with people. Mm-hmm. So if I did that in more of a business sense rather than in a fun sense, I could have these two things that I'm pretty passionate about. Whereas like at the time I was passionate about golf and it was like... Mm, you're passionate now about golf too. Yeah, but it, in its right place, right? It was yes. like I was so passionate about golf that I wanted to be a pro golfer. Yes, you did. For a year. Yeah. And I was out working. Modeling. Modeling, uh, getting my personal trainer certificate, and then learning internet marketing on how to become a health coach. Yeah. And that's that's what I was doing when you were golfing. And then um, and then it got to a point, you know, where we made that big investment in the mastermind. And then I was like, are you jumping on this? Are we going to, like, build something together? And then And then you came on board. And it was cool how God just, like, shifted our business because I was like the front facing and and Nicholas was like behind the scenes and it didn't work out. Um, so I think like one of the keys on like, you know, working together is like knowing each other's strengths and not trying to change the other person and really trying to bring out the gold in that other person. And so, um, you know, in a business you could be like, all right, you know, there's like 50 roles that two people have to fill. You know, when you're first starting a business, you're like, I'm the HR department, I'm the shipping department, I'm the customer service, I'm the content person. And so realizing each other's strengths is the most important and not trying to change the other person. And that's why I think building that foundation on on God and then knowing each other and then building upon the business. You know, you don't want to like do the opposite because then that's well, not that, I think that's what we're seeing in the long term now is like a decade into business, we're recognizing that at first we kind of aren't that good at anything. Yes. Everything's kind of the same. So you're doing everything in the business. And then as we started to grow, we recognized you shouldn't be the front and I should be. The business started growing because of that. We started seeing that each you of us had skills. Sales. Yeah, I should the do the sales. We started recognizing that we had things that we sucked at, that some things we had greater capacity to grow in. Mm-hmm. So I had a great capacity to grow in sales and communication, yeah. yet I wasn't good at it at the beginning but I had a greater capacity for that than tech. Yeah. So as we started seeing that, we would feed the fire with that. But if, if both of you guys have different skills, which usually people would, then the more that you can feed those skill sets and grow on those, because usually what you're great at, you also enjoy doing. And so if you're great at it, you enjoy doing it, and it's effective for the company, that's what keeps people in momentum. And if you want to work together, whether it's in a household or in a business, over a long period of time, it's more so continuing to align, figuring out what do you like to do, what are you really good at, and what needs to be done, and then filling those other gaps. And I think that's like where you're alluding to now is we went for so long doing things that we are good at, we'd like to do, needed to do, but also that we were good at, that we didn't like to do and needed to be done. Also the things that we weren't good at, we didn't want to do, and sometimes didn't even need to be done or sometimes needed to, and instead of bringing other people in so that we yeah. could really focus down on our strengths, because it's inside of that place that someone's able to be effective and not feel like this constant overwhelm. You'd see this in personality tests with adapting. You have to adapt to a different personality type, and you can only do it for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so that's been a place that we've really tried to push on. Is like, for me, I film content. I don't edit it. You don't edit it. And so it's like we've taken, okay, I'm, I'm good at this area. I need to do this area. I like doing this area. This other area needs to be done, but I'm not good at it. I don't like it. So we need to find Mm -hmm. support in that rather than consistently keeping that stress load really high over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And I think that for people that are starting out, just knowing that it doesn't take long to get there, right? It's like Mm -hmm. if you focus down on your strengths right now, the company can produce enough money to find people that can help in those different areas. Mm -hmm. And there's also a lot of things that maybe the company's doing that doesn't need to be done right now and so you can kind of just be like, let's shelve that. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't do content like this for a long time mm-hmm. because it wasn't necessary to yeah. start the business. But
but it was necessary to get to the next level of where we want to go in business. Mm -hmm. So we kind of waited for that right time. Yeah. But that's, that was difficult. And like, when I look back at the business, it was like, we started network marketing, we failed. I went to carpet cleaning, lost vision. You were doing all the right things I was providing. I was cleaning carpets for our main source of income. And then having to like fill myself with other things because I was so dead, had lost vision, was so like beaten down every single day to this transition to getting into business and working together again and finding that what's our skill sets? What are we good at? Like I didn't feel like I brought anything to the table and and you know, the constant dynamic of that and then, you know, the phase of having kids and like the difference with that as well. It's been like a crazy journey. But like one of the things that we've always done is we've cut we've kept God first and even more so now than ever before. Yeah. We're plugged into a church, we're tithing, we're doing the the things that biblically we want to obey his commands and the more we learn about them, we want to do it. Mm-hmm. The vision that God has for our life, the thousand year, thousand generation, his mission first above everything else. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was something weird that we went through as well was like, we had that, we wanted to build a business, but every example of people building a business, we're doing it with this more worldly motivation, mm-hmm. but the tactics to carry out that motivation were good, like run Facebook ads. The tactic was good. The motivation wasn't. We kind of like tried on some of those motivations going, well, maybe my motivation of moving the kingdom forward isn't the correct one to build the business. Let me kind of try that on for a little bit. We're like, oh, this is kind of unfulfilling. But we learned the tactic. Now we're like, well, what if it was kingdom and tactic Mm -hmm. rather than worldly and tactic to create a good cause? And I think that that was super impactful for us. But as a general thing, we've always put God first in a relationship our relationship above the business. I think that's always big. We've had many conversations where if you were stressed or I was stressed, we were like, hey, we'll shut down the entire company tomorrow Mm -hmm. and do something else because the company isn't more valuable or important than our relationship. Yeah. So our relationship with God, our relationship together, our relationship with family, and then comes the business Mm -hmm. stuff. And that's always been the hierarchy of how we've created everything, though so much of our time goes into the business. We care about it a lot, but we would definitely quit it in a heartbeat. And I think that for most mm-hmm. guys out there or women, they look at business. We had conversations with guys back in the day that were like, I don't know, my business is kind of more important than like my family because it's kind of like a kid to me. Yeah. That's it's like, not good. well, what happens when, when that actually, those two things collide together? Mm-hmm. What are you going to choose? You know, it's kind of like the, you know, Money's over here, your kid's hanging off a cliff over here. Do you run to money or do you save your kid? It's a good question to ask. Um, I think in terms of how to separate business and marriage, um, I think it's kind of like a dance. I think that it's not necessarily one way or the other. You know, like on date nights, we sometimes talk about business because we want to talk about business, you know? But I think if you're like next weekend, um, we're heading to Miami for an anniversary and I'm already thinking in my head, just like talking here, I'm like, okay, I don't want to talk about business on that trip. I want it just to be super relaxing, super chill, not like, hey, here's a plan. Have we thought about this? Like, so if we have those conversations, we have those thoughts, like do them beforehand so that when you go on that date and every go on that trip, it's not about business. It's about each other. It's about getting to know each other better. It's about, you know, talking about family and goals and different things like that. Um, just being present and not always being like in the future, because that's something that I struggle with is thinking about, Oh, let's do this in the future. Let's do this in the future. And then I like bring it into the now and then I'm not actually present because I'm always thinking about the future. And so, um, I just like already know for myself, if I'm like that, I should have those conversations before we go on a personal trip like that. Um, but I think, I think setting those boundaries thinks each couple's different. I mean, like I said, we sometimes talk about business at on date nights, and then you know people talking about you can't talk about your kids on date night. I think that is like absolutely stupid. Like what? I don't get that. Well, some people that's all they talk about. So if it's all you talk about, then yeah, that's dumb. Yeah. Like you have to connect. But even on the business and personal and marriage side, I don't really look at it that way. I look at it as this. 
you got marriage and you have business. I don't look at it. I look at it as we are married together. We are called by God with a mission to do something. And so it's just a calling on our life. It's mm-hmm. like our what we're building and a mission that we're walking through. So it's not like a separated thing to me where it's like mm-hmm. maybe the company is, but the visions that we have in business and what we're looking to create, those are like longer term things that are just a part of our calling. And so when we're talking about it, we're talking about our calling or we're not just talking about a certain business. And again, you mm-hmm. can talk about just one certain business and all that stuff. And that's where it's like, yeah, you have to, there's a time to grind, just like there's a time to war. And then there's a time to celebrate. And you'd, th- you'd see these people that would go to war, they'd come home and for like seven days, they would just like party. Mm-hmm. It's like, you have to have those times where you take ground, you fortify, you enjoy the, what, what's there. And then you figure out what's that next thing. And I think that kind of dance is really good. But some of the ways that we've done it is just more so creating certain boundaries as, as best we can when we're excited about our work. We'll talk about the date night, at night, whatever. If there's things that happen during the day that don't allow us to work, we'll work on stuff at night. But for the most part, it's like, hey, the weekends, we don't sit there and hardcore only talk about business. Mm-hmm. When it's nighttime, especially for me, we don't hardcore talk about business because for you, when sometimes you're with Kingston during the day, you'll be like yeah. 9.30 at night, like Having I need to work on things. Meeting. And I'm like, bro, like I just worked all day. You didn't. Now it's like you want to work because you didn't. And that's that's tough, but that's a new thing, right? None of this stuff's going to like go away. Just the lens that you look at everything, the order of importance that you put on your on your marriage, mm-hmm. that's what doesn't go away. And so this is a new thing, right? It's like... Mm-hmm. Three-year-old, we had a full-time nanny for for a while. Now we have days that he goes to school, days that he hangs out with you. And so now that's created a new dynamic that we have to figure out, how do we do this really well? I think that as an entrepreneur couple that has kids, you have to figure out for your family, and you're going to want to figure it out specifically for your family, what's the best way to do it for you? Mm-hmm. Because the normal employee-style family stuff doesn't work. Like drop them off a of daycare and do this. It's like... Okay, well, as an entrepreneur family, you may be working on projects together. Yeah. That's why we had a full-time au pair. Now we have school plus nanny. Like, it's like, well, what's the dynamic that's going to work for our family to yeah. pour into our kids, be able to raise our kids? Because, again, that's more important than our business, too. That's true. And that works as an entrepreneur family, not just a yeah. employee family. Yeah. I think, like, we're working towards... Or the stay-at-home mom family, too, like which is different. Yeah. So that's not us either. Yeah. I think we're working towards, in our business, how can we leverage our team and leverage more so that we can be even more with yeah. each other and, and our family. Because which is tough is for me, important. though. Like, when people are working, like, it's really difficult for me to, like, watch them working. And, like, maybe I'll be doing something high level. Like, yesterday I went out with the pastor. But we're doing something fun. But that relationship is high level, meaning it's very impactful. Mm -hmm. It impacts how we do business. It's like a high mover. Even right now we're recording or I'll travel somewhere to record with someone. But I'm traveling. I'm eating lunch and whatever. Like I'm not in an office like doing my thing. And that's super difficult for me because other people are working really hard. And it makes me feel like I hope they don't think that I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know, like I always feel that. Yeah. As well as I feel bad. When I'm working and I'm not with you guys, I also Nick, feel bad. struggles with dad guilt. Yeah. I also feel guilt. bad if I'm with you guys and not working, right? Because it's like, <laughs> oh, man, it's in the middle of the day. So I have both of those style feelings that I always like constantly have to just figure out, like, how do I do this well and find that, mm-hmm. you know, what's most important? What do I need to get done? When's it time to spend time with the family? But I'm mostly just saying it because it's like there's other people out there that go through that same thing. Yeah, I think asking God for those like certain boundaries because like David Green, he works six days a week. I don't know if he always did, but I know he had like a five o'clock, no work after five. And he um, always had dinner with his whole family like every single night. I think, yeah, every family is a little bit different. But like even for me as as a mom who, you know, runs a company, I... And just seeing Kingston today, like, dropping him off at school. Like, we didn't send him to school till like, almost three and a half, you know? And even now, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to take him out. I don't know. I'm still, like, 
It's still, it's still difficult. It's still difficult. But I'm like, I cannot send my kid to school before like three years old. Like they're just so, so little, you know, and like no one cares for them as much as you. And I think like realizing like you build a business so you can spend time on the things you want to spend time on. And, um, you know, I'm just so grateful that we were able to, to do that and like keep him home until he was, you know, over three years old because yeah. you just never get that time back, you know? And so I think like even being smart as a couple, it's like, okay, this is what we, we want our life to look like. Like some people want to travel all the time. Like we're not like those people that want to, like we like being home. Um, so that's not a big thing. It's just more like spending, spending time with the people we want to spend time with. Um, so figuring out like, how can we le- like outsource you more, not outsource, how can we leverage your time more so you're not working all the time and like same for me so that we can, we can have that as an entrepreneurial When couple. we've gone through like the different phases of like the startup phase, to the success phase as a couple, Mm -hmm. traveled, built a business where we just wake up, work, go to the gym when we felt like it, night or morning. We would work and then watch a show and work. Yeah, we would work pretty much all the time before we had Kingston. Go to dinner. And then when Kingston was born, we took two years where I worked basically part-time. You did as well, maybe. And like we built it that way. Now we're in a leverage building phase where we're like, okay, Kingston's at this age now where we feel called to work more or like grow something and use leverage in order to, to be able to yeah. go. And like I think use going back to the episode with, with that we talked about with David Green is it might cost you money to put your family first. Like it might, it might, you know, hiring more team members is going to cost more money for your, you know, your bottom line, but what's more important, yep. you know? So I think like thinking about that stuff and I think, no one really talked to us about that. I mean, did anyone share this with you? Like, I think we just see people work as entrepreneurs and they just work all the time. And the people that we see even in business, like some of the guys like literally travel like two weeks out of the month. Like they are not home. Well, you only see them in the weeks. one environment. You don't see how it is at home. So either they're like, yeah, we don't see them at home. Terrible home environment, but you never would know. Or they do things differently and... You would never know because you just see them in one environment. So, yeah, it was really difficult to know what people did. Yeah. So I think being clear, like that's how we want to be is just being like super clear on how we live our life, you know. And even for you, like like the other day you picked Kingston up from school at like 4 o'clock and you like spent the whole afternoon with him, you know, until I got home at like 6.30 because I was getting my hair done. And so I think like you are a very – even though you do work a lot, like you're a very present dad and you spend a ton of time with Kingston, a ton of quality time. But yet at the same time, like we're kind of just like figuring it all out because every stage is so different. But one of the things I could do better is like forward planning of things with him. Mm -hmm. Like I spend a lot of time with him on what he wants to do, Yeah. but I don't like push him to go do other things partially because I want him to do what he wants to do. But I'm also like, man, I would love to like, yeah, like plan things that are enjoyable with him that mm-hmm. he could do, and just like getting better at that type of stuff. I think is a big deal. Yeah, and what I was saying about the costing money, like spending going out on date night. If you don't have childcare, you know, if you have kids, like you have to spend money on childcare and then spend money on going on date night. Like it's an investment to do that. And then us going on like our anniversary trip, you know, like it's easy to just like brush that off. It's easy to just be like, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, because our anniversary was like two weeks ago. We'll just like brush that off and not not plan anything because it it does, you know, take investing, you know, plane flights, time, the hotel, all the food, like yeah. all the experiences. But it's an investment in our relationship, and it's it's very important that we connect as a couple every single day and, you know, have those, those rhythms, you know, our our vacations, our date nights so that we are strong. And we've been telling um, Kingston recently at night, like, Hey Kingston, you need to go to bed, honey, because mommy and daddy need to spend time together so that we have a healthy family and a healthy marriage. And he's like, Oh, okay, mommy. And I think it's just like modeling to him what marriage, the value of marriage and the value of his parents connecting because the parents that don't do that and they put their kids first over their marriage, 
obviously doesn't always end up too well. No, it wouldn't end up well because that's not the correct form biblically in order to do it. Yeah. And, and whatever season you're in, it doesn't matter what season you're in. It's having vision for the next season. So if right now you can't afford date nights, you can't afford the child care, well, then have it as a vision so that it gets you to do the things that you can rather than staying there. As soon as you can, then invest in your marriage. Like that That's a place where it's one of those things where it's like, if you buy that thing that you enjoy, it makes you work harder because you're in a better state. And it's like, well, if you work better, then you'd make more money. And then that thing didn't cost you anymore because it actually added to the business. That's and it's true. like, you can neg neglect your, your relationship all you want, not invest in it, not get the right coaching, the right mentorship, the right groups, get around the right people, the right education because you want to save money. And then it ends up ruining the entire marriage because you never put it before money or before anything else. Mm -hmm. And so that ends up costing you way more in the long term. Mm -hmm. And so it's knowing what things are worth investing in because that it'll cost you more not to. And that may be in the business at first, it may be the thing like making work more enjoyable. So you are like, okay, I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'm gonna have a vision that I know that once I work this hard, make this much money, we can buy a new computer. And I remember the first time I bought my new computer, like an Apple MacBook Pro, it made work so much more enjoyable, so much faster, that gave us more money. So you don't have to like go buy all this stuff now or go invest in a $10,000 or $15,000 trip with your wife. It's like, okay, this is where I'm at. We're going to do it like this, but we have vision that when we hit this goal, we get to go here mm -hmm. and get the new MacBook and working. And then it's like, okay, then we're going to go to date night. We went four years to date night that was $25. Yes. It, does, so, it doesn't have to be a lot. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be a lot, yet we could have saved that and done other things, but that connection time together is what made us work better together, created mm -hmm. more harmony in the home, created value, like wherever your money is, your heart is also. So if you're not investing money in a relationship, your heart's not there. Anything else you want to add? Nope, just if you're watching on YouTube, then hit the subscribe button. Make sure to give us a little thumbs up. If you have any questions for Amanda and I, or even just Amanda, then go ahead and uh, drop it down in the comments. You can also ring this little bell. It looks like a little bell there. It'll give you notifications when new interviews go live, solo episodes or episodes like this. Also, if you're listening, go over to YouTube. The opposite, if you're on YouTube, you can go listen on any podcast platform. You're just gonna wanna subscribe as well so it's easy to get the episodes. If this has been valuable, you could actually leave a rate and review that allows you to multitask when you're listening and not just watching both sides we're on every platform also amanda barely on instagram nicholas barely on instagram go connect with us there we'd love to hear different takeaways that you've had or your specific questions as well thank you for supporting god's business